All right, guys, so let's, uh, let's get into our second section of, of quiz seven, which is going through a typical night's sleep. All right, as you can see here, when we go to sleep, our melatonin, melatonin levels are high, and we start to lose awareness to things that would normally wake us up or keep us awake, such as a TV or a cell phone, video gaming, uh, people talking down the hallway, whatever it might be, you just start to lose awareness of those, of those things. Why? You are drifting into an altered state. And when you go into this altered state, you go through what we call stages, all right? And the stages are um, referred to as NREM stages or non-REM stages. We'll get to that in a little bit, what the, that means. And every stage is numbered, every non-REM stage. And the, the bigger the number, the deeper the sleep. So obviously we're starting off in a very light stage of sleep we just closed our eyes and this is called stage one. every stage can vary in length from anywhere from five minutes to an hour differs from person to person okay um could depend on the medications that are in your body if you've got sleep aids if a person's using drugs or alcohol all of those types of um, substances can influence how little or uh, how much we spend in each stage stage one though a very light stage if we were to look at a person's brain on an EEG, all right, it would register as what are called alpha waves. Alpha waves, I like to sometimes think of as awake, all right, or alert. So if you can, you can see right here, um, associate alpha with awake. It typically means our brain is still quite a, quite, quite awake. And if I could show you this right here. This is what our brain looks like probably right now, all right, a relaxed waking brain. This is our brain when it is in stage one. Very, very similar, tight, rapid waves, much like being awake. So again, if someone were to call your name or your phone were to chime, you'd, you'd easily wake up, all right? Or say a teacher called your name for sleeping in class, you would, again, wake up with, with relative ease. It is also during this stage, though, that something interesting happens, and, and we believe it happens almost every single night. Most nights, it's very faint. Other times it can be very pronounced. We call it a hypnic sensation, a hypnagogic sensation, also referred to as a hypnic jerk. It's where you're asleep and you get this sudden sensation that you might be falling or something's about to hit you and people will spasm. They will kick a leg or even sprout up out of bed. It happens to some of you guys in, in your study halls, in your classes. This can... Uh, easily be explained, I think, through our vestibular sense, all right, which is that fluid in our ears. Uh, it senses a tipping over or a falling over, and our brain acts as almost a panic alarm, which is kind of neat, to make sure that we don't want to uh, tip over. Think of this, this bottle of water as that vestibular sac, and then we tilt it on its side like so, uh, and we go to bed very quickly. It indicates a toppling over, and we sprout back up very quickly and go, yeah, I'm good. I want to be asleep and then we go back to lying down. That's the hypnic sensation. All right, final uh, characteristics of stage one that I want to comment with you guys is that we are easily aroused. Not sexually, that's, that's a stage coming up, all right? Uh, this one is just more you're easily awakened. Someone can call you out for sleeping. You'll pop your eyes open and deny that you ever were asleep because, again, your, your alpha waves are indicative of this stage. All right, stay, you stay asleep through stage one, you obviously per, proceed into stage two, which is a deeper sleep. Everything is continuing to slow down. Let's go back to our EEG. Here is stage two. You can see the waves are starting to stretch out a little bit more. We're eventually gonna get to these spindles, which are called delta waves, indicating deep sleep. But this is stage two, sort of a middle ground. And you're not as easy to wake up as you were in stage one. Your pulse, your body temperature, your blood pressure are all continuing to drop. And, which might sound sad, we spend a majority of our time in this stage. Okay, I'll get to, get to why that is here when we finish up the sleep cycle. But this is our most frequently visited stage. Remember that, stage two, the non-REM stage two. Okay, after stage two comes stage three, which is our final numbered stage. It is the deepest sleep. All right, this is, uh, this is when sleepwalking takes place. This is when you're toughest to wake up. And guys your age and younger spend a lot of time in stage three compared to me and your parents and your grandparents. Uh, 
but ultimately it's it's not one of the more popular stages throughout a, a human life. This is again called stage three, characterized by delta waves. Delta, I also associate the D with deep, so delta indicating deep sleep, good to, good to remember. Put all that together though, it only comes out to possibly 60 minutes. All right, stage one, two, and three, total together might only be 60 minutes, 80 tops. We don't just sleep that long. So something really interesting happens after we hit that stage three, we cycle back through them in reverse. So just to, to, to rehearse real quick, when we go to bed, we go stage one, and then stage two, and then stage three, deep sleep, and then we start to come back out of it. Stage two, stage one, so yeah, about an hour and a half or so into our night's sleep, we start to wake back up, and in comes this fourth stage called REM. Everybody has heard REM, all right? Stands for rapid eye movement because that's literally what our eyes are doing. If you know someone whose eyes uh, are partially open when they're asleep, get up real close, you'll see their eyes moving back and forth very rapidly. It's also uh, our big dreaming stage. So it's the vivid dreaming stage. We'll talk a lot more about dreams in quiz eight, but yes, dreams are taking place during REM. It's a paradox, however, all right? A paradox means there's a, there's a, a conflict. There's a disagreement of some sort. There's a disagreement in our body, which is really interesting. Think of it this way. Half of our body is trying to wake up. The other half of our body is trying to stay asleep. That's the paradox. So your pulse, your blood pressure are increasing. This is actually uh, when we are aroused sexually. So it's totally normal for sexual arousal in the middle of the night, multiple times during the night. That's indicative of REM. Our blood is flowing, okay? However, other parts of our body are trying to stay calm and relaxed. This is actually really good. Our muscles are virtually paralyzed, sometimes referred to as sleep paralysis. The good part of that is, remember, REM is our dream stage. If we're having a dream, we want our muscles to stay calm. Otherwise, we will act out our dreams. Some people do this, and it's called REM sleep behavior disorder. Uh, I will put the, the link to this video in the uh, description of, of this YouTube video so for you guys to watch if you want. It's a story of a guy who has this disorder. Give it a watch if, if you want. He doesn't have this mechanism that keeps his muscles paralyzed during a dream. And so he has punched holes in walls. People have jumped out of bed because they think they're a paratrooper or they're an Olympic diver. It's kind of comical, but it can, it can obviously end with some serious injury. So uh, that's what's known as REM sleep behavior disorder. We will talk a lot about more disorders in uh, part three of this. But that's our first one, a very generic name, All right, but very real. So thankfully, this doesn't happen to everybody. And, and those of us that it doesn't happen to, you, you might get glimpses of that paralysis in some of your dreams if you've ever found it hard to run from something or someone. Or I, I have a, sometimes in my dreams a difficult time pedaling a bike. My legs just won't get going. Perhaps what that's due to is this mixed message in our body of paralysis while in REM. Our, our brain is looking for info from our legs in that moment, and our legs are saying, hey, kind of paralyzed right now and it gets you know jumbled up in a dream where we can't run or we can't pedal a bike fast enough all right so that's that's REM uh, by quick review remember the other stages are called non-REM stages one through three and then the fourth and final stage is known as REM okay by way of review a sleep cycle is one two three three two one REM one, two, three, three, two, one, REM. That's approximately 90 minutes. We don't just sleep 90 minutes a night. We cycle through these possibly four to six times. So it would go one, two, three, three, two, one, REM. One, two, three, three, two, one, REM. And over and over. And remember, REM is dreams. So we could be having four to six separate dreams or not a night. We're lucky if we can remember one dream, right? Uh, but with a little bit of practice, there is an ability to remember multiple dreams each night, and I'll teach you about that in, uh, in the quiz eight section. Here is a, uh, uh, a sleep hypnogram. You guys can actually get these um, downloaded on your phone with an app. Sleep Cycle is the name of the app. It's free, and when you wake up the next morning, it'll spit out something that looks like this. This is probably someone your age. You can see when you go to bed, we hit one, two, stage three, 
stage two, stage one, and then REM. One, two, three, two, one, REM. One, two, three, two, one, REM. And then as we get closer to waking up, you see stage three doesn't happen as much. Um, this, I would say, however, is someone more indicative of your age. If this was someone my age, uh, this one wouldn't be as, as, as you see here, maybe even this one. You get less stage three as you get older, less deep sleep. Okay, so that's, again, uh, the sleep cycle. If you were to look at statistically how much time we spend in these stages, we spend a majority of our time in stages two and REM. This is good, actually. Stage two, like I said before, it's not a deep sleep, but maybe that's by design. Maybe we don't want to be too deep of a sleeping species. What if a baby is crying down the hallway? What if there's an intruder in our home? We want to be able to hear those things. And, and, and researchers say this is... Um, and uh, an instinct from our ancestors that we don't want to be too deep of a sleeping species in case predators are nearby. We don't obviously have predators like we did thousands and thousands of years ago, uh, but our predators nowadays are weather alerts and babies in distress. And so we want to increase the chances that, that we'll hear that. So stage two is when we want to spend most of our time sleeping. And that is what happens by design. And then the other 25% is REM. REM is the good stuff. REM is when our brain really plugs into that charger and replenishes. So depriving ourselves of REM can lead to uh, sleepy, uh, groggy, you know, lack of focus type days the next day. This often can happen when we put drugs and alcohol in our body. It, de it deprives us of REM. So even though you might sleep 15 hours after a night of drinking or drugs, uh, you don't get good sleep. You don't get good REM sleep. And so you're often very tired and, and, and uh, poorly focused the next day. Okay, so there you go. 50% stage two, 25% REM. And that means the remaining 25% excuse me, is split among stages one and three. The very light sleep and the very deep sleep. Okay, last little uh, section for part, part two here is things to remember is that sleep requirements will differ for everybody. The National Sleep Foundation is always going to say, get eight hours, get eight hours. Uh, for you guys, even more than that, sometimes up to nine or 10. That's not possible all the time. So we can adapt just like our senses adapt. There's people in this class, people listen to this video who can function just fine on five hours of sleep. Right now I can function pretty well on six to seven hours of sleep. I've adapted to that. Is that good? No, it's not. It's not. But I can adapt to that. So there's guys that can sleep five hours of sleep and still get through a whole school day. Whereas you other guys might need eight or nine hours of sleep to get through a, uh, um, a full school day. There is apparently a story of a Stanford professor who slept just one hour a night for uh, most of his adult career. He was able to adjust his sleep schedule to just one hour of night. Not recommended, but possible. Sadly, sleep is going to change with age, fellas. Look at this here. Look how great it was to be an infant. In the first couple years of life, we're getting anywhere from 12 to 16 hours of sleep per day. Here's you guys right now, hovering around 8, takes in, into account weekends and summer vacation. And then as we get older, bam, not as much good sleep. So if you've got grandparents who are getting more than, than what it says here, go home and tell them congratulations because uh, they are in the minority. And then finally, which, which gender do you think sleeps better? This is going to depend on what website you go to, what research you look up. It, it drifts back and forth. The data that I have right now says that guys sleep a little better than girls. Um, women statistically are sleeping uh, a little bit later, meaning they're, they're going, to, going to sleep a little later and waking up earlier, which leads to more of a, of a uh, disrupted sleep cycle. And then feminine-related uh, uh, um, issues like menstruation and pregnancy, menopause, can lead to uh, uh, deficiencies in sleep also. Okay, so guys sleep a little bit better. We are prone to certain disorders that women aren't as um, vulnerable to, uh, which will be my, my third and final video for this, uh, this quiz seven. So good job. Thanks for listening to, to the sleep cycle. Part three, we'll finish it up with the sleep disorders.